How's it going my dudes? Welcome back to another video. Today let's talk about how to achieve the 1000 combo trophy which is none other than the inhuman combo. Okay, so my approach to this is very simple. This is absolutely not the only way to do it, but I find that this is the easiest way to do so. So let me show you how I did it. So there are compulsory units, there are good to have units, and there are just filler units. So for compulsory units, there is only just one, and that one compulsory unit is going to be a Beretta. And let's take a look at her ability number two. When the combo reaches 20, for 10 seconds you add, okay, no, this is not the one that's important. <laughs> when the combo reaches 20, until the next flip, you pierce and this piercing goes perpetually because it lasts for 150 seconds but every time you reach another 20 stack of combos, it resets. So this is going to be super important because if you're going to swim through the bosses and all the ads, you're going to need to have pierce in order to maintain your position on the field and not bounce off every time which will then hinder your combo progression. So Beretta is a definite must if you want to have an easy run. So let's talk about the other good to have units. Number one, there is going to be Albert. I think Albert is really good to have because he adds 20% to the time that Levitate is active. And that actually gives you a lot of opportunity to maintain your placing on the field and to make sure that you don't run out of Levitation before your next skill goes. And the idea is every single skill that you use needs to have Levitation. So for me, I have Shiwei as my first unit with Levitation, Albert as a second unit with Levitation, and Furia as a third unit with Levitation. And the second unit that is really good to have is, believe it or not, Kama Itachi. So if you take a look at his ability number one, every 30 times a unit dashes until the next flip. This unit does two direct hits. So this is very important because with two direct hits you double your combo stacking. And the thing is, until the next flip, you're not even going to flip until you achieve a thousand combos at least. So this is going to be yet another perpetual buff. And the third unit that is really good to have is going to be a Furia because if you're going to stay on a field for so long, you're going to need superb heals. And Furia is not only just really good for healing, she's also a wind type and she also has levitation as well. And the reason why wind type is going to be so important is because we are using the death axe over here. So if you take a look at the death axe, for every one wind unit that is or are added to the party, you add 10% to the time that levitate is active up to 60%. So the more wind units you have, the longer your levitation will last. And believe it or not, my fourth unit that I think is very good to use on this team is going to be Momia. So let's take a look at Momia over here. And the reason why she is so good is because looking at ability number two, when Pierce is active, this unit does two direct hits. So yet another perpetual double hit unit over here. As long as you have Beretta on the team, she's going to do double hits. And now to finish off the intro, here are some units that are absolutely replaceable. You don't really need to use them. I'm just using them because they serve a good purpose. So the first one, let's take a look at Arisa over here. Forest Arrow is her skill. Loses several volleys of Fey Arrows before her, restoring the HP of all allies. And looking at her ability 1, you increase 8% to the heals caster on the party. And ability 2, when the combo reaches 30, for the first 15 times, you heal 1% of the HP of this unit. So generally, Arisa is just going to be a very good healer for my team. Just like Furia, she brings a little bit of wind heals. However, she may not be so optimal because she may do a little bit too much damage and sometimes you may actually defeat the boss before you achieve a thousand combos, which is not what we need. And the next unit that I think is replaceable is going to be Shiwe. Some people may disagree with me. Uh, Shiwe has a pretty nice kit, to be honest. Like, she has levitation and she increases the duration of levitation, which is perfect, right? However, she faces the same issue with Arisa, so she actually brings a little bit too much damage and in fact, too much direct attack damage. More times than not, actually defeats the boss for me earlier than I need him to. So over here, ability number one, 50% extra direct hit damage to win units. And ability number two, every 10 times a direct hit is dealt, you add 10% to a direct hit damage for this unit. And not only that, ability number three, when a skill is activated by win units, you add 20% to the attack for that unit. So I'd make the argument that she's not exactly that useful over here. And here are some options that I think you can use for this team that actually works, but they don't really fit so nicely in my opinion. So first, there is going to be Celti. Celti does perpetual double hits. So if you take a look at this, ability 3, this unit does 2 direct hits all the time, right? But the thing is, if you use her skill, be prepared to nuke the boss really heavily. And let's say you're missing out on a third floating unit, you can definitely use Aurora. He grants levitation, but other than that, that's about it. And Mew is also pretty decent. Yes, she only has 5 seconds of double hits, but she also charges your skill gauge a lot. So whenever you reach 30 combo, you add skill gauge to this unit. And if you unfortunately do not have Beretta, you can definitely use Rain. Rain grants both levitation and piercing, which is always good to have. And not only that, Rain deploys these two buffs for 15 entire seconds. And if you are desperate enough, you can always use Lassie. If you take a look at her ability 1 and 2, you add 24% to the time that buffs are active for this unit. However, the thing is, levitation only needs to be on one of your units for your entire team to be floating. So this unit alone already increases your levitation time by 24%. 
So as you can see over here, I'm running Shiwe for her leader, where I'm focused more on the HP rather than the attack. And the armament that I'm using on Shiwe is going to be the compound bow, which increases the levitation time. This is a gacha bow after all, but it is still good to have. So let's quickly take a look at the team in action and understand how it works. At the beginning, it's pretty straightforward. There is nothing much you can do, you just need to build up your skill gauges and use your skills one by one. Do not stack your skills. Also, do take note that this should be run on manual. You can't do auto on this because not only is your AI going to throw all the skills at once, your AI is also more than likely going to flip your unit. And your objective is to try to avoid the flippers as much as possible. You're going to encounter a lot of failures. So you have to keep practicing and practicing and practicing. And this is probably the most difficult achievement that I've accomplished thus far. But you want to separate your skills because you want to extend the levitation duration as long as you can. And in fact, you should be on permanent levitation. There should never be one instance where you're out of levitation. So here's our first skill. It's very important for you to use it at the right location. It's going to be quite difficult as well, but honestly, don't sweat. If you miss it, doesn't really matter. What's more important is that you upkeep your levitation again. Because with levitation and with piercing, you are definitely going to charge up your next skill on time. So it's not really so much about race against the clock. So don't beat yourself too much if you miss a skill. So some tips for you guys is to not look at where you are. Instead, look at the top where you can see the three units HP bars. Whenever the HP is getting lower, use your furious skill as a priority. And whenever your levitation is flashing, prepare your skill for whichever unit has their skill active. And I would always recommend to use the skill with the longer skill gauge. And honestly, this works for me, but I'm always just staring at the top and using my peripheral vision to kind of like triangulate the location of my units. So the moment my units go below the boss, that's when I tap the screen to make sure my units fly up. And yes, this requires a little bit of practice because sometimes you're just going to go down to the flippers and accidentally hit the flippers onto your units and that is going to be so painful for the run but this is generally how i do it you don't really need to worry too much about the boss using his skills and all that you're going to be able to outlive it most of the time and the reason why i'm doing this on golem advanced plus is because his skills take a long time to charge so his soft spots actually appear for a long duration of time which allows me to break him all the time so as soon as you can reliably achieve 600 combos you're pretty much good to go it's all just a matter of focus so if you have been failing for like let's say 30 minutes i suggest you to take a break don't do it in one sitting because for me i failed for two hours straight and that was very aggravating for me and very bad for my mentality as well but after i took a shower i came back and i did it in just one go so this is pretty much it all the best for your run do let me know if you're able to achieve a thousand combos as well and definitely tell me about the team that you use so with that said hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did don't forget to leave a thumbs up it really helps the channel this has been free to play by the way and as always i will see you in the next video